Hello and welcome to Unsourced Wall. My name is Elvis and as always, I'm your host. Okay, so let's head on with some news. It's going to be kind of a short one. We have less things to talk about this week, but hopefully we still have quite a few things, especially with news, because even though there's not much to discuss, there is one main point of contention this week that I think is pretty interesting. And it seems to be that how the Disney-Fox merger has led to a lot of in-development movies being canceled, quite a few of which happen to be comic related. To be specific, such movies like Lumberjanes, which was getting adapted, or Noah Hawley's Doctor Doom origin movie, that's finally kaput, and even Taika Waititi's Flash Gordon has been axed. Which is a shame, I mean, I know I didn't have the highest expectations for these movies, but I would like to have been proven wrong and surprised. Earlier casualties included, of course, the Mouse Guard film. I have to say though, I do think we missed a bullet with the Flash Gordon movie. Someone put it best when they heard this news when they said that Thor Ragnarok was pretty much what Taika Waititi was gonna make anyway and that just sent shivers up my spine so I'm really glad that didn't happen and it's not gonna happen. Still, it seems prudent to pour one out for them. To segue to more possibly cancelled movies, we have gotten more scuttlebutt about New Mutants in that apparently Disney is considering shelving the thing entirely. According to rumors, they've seen a rough cut and don't think it has any actual chance in the box office. But, you know, neither did Dark Phoenix and that was sent out to slaughter. It would be a shame but it does seem like the most likely outcome. It's been almost three years now and and with every pushback and delay, it might just be time to give up the ghost on this one just a little bit. That would be a bit of a whimper for this to go out on, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Moving ahead to comic news, because there's no real TV news outside of some nonsense about how The Flash is going to continue to be a dragged out slog this season, we are getting some more insight into what DC is planning to do with these dark multiverse event one-shots, that they're just jamming them right out. We have two new announced ones for Infinite Crisis and Blackest Night, and they just seem to be continuing the trend of being random elsewhere one-shots with no real rhyme or reason other than things go bad in this event this time. Again, good for the fans of metal and all that, and I hope they have fun with it, but it's gotten really dull really quick. They're also apparently making an arc in Batman Superman into a small mini event by having one shot spinning out of that, and it is just not really worth it. It feels so one note and so rote, and it wasn't that great an event anyway, and it might have some potential, but the fact that it's all being coordinated around the same atmosphere over and over again means that it won't ever really catch capture anything that interesting and that's a shame but anyway fingers crossed for that hope it actually turns out to be any kind of fun moving ahead into what i read this week we only have two things the first of which is second coming number two and this was incredibly better than the first issue that one felt like all it really had was a gimmick but it laid it on maybe a bit too sparsely and tritely in order to aim for some sort of lowest common denominator perceptions about god and christianity it felt weak when it really shouldn't have been this this works a lot better because it turns the lens the other way around rather than zeroing in on old cliches about the weaknesses of Christ and religion and God, it turns the focus onto making Sunstar, the Superman character, into more of a parody, pastiche, and reflective commentary. And while that might rankle a few, and I'd understand why, it helps to give the series a stronger backbone because now it can get into the real meat where talking about and discussing the lessons of Christ can have the most narrative and emotional impact. It actually felt like there was morality both on display and being discussed without crashing the story to a halt. By having Sunstar be the foil and not the other way around, it hits harder, it lands smoother, and it actually makes you think about the things it's discussing and mulling things over. At least I know I did. It just felt good to read. It felt stimulating. It felt substantial and brimming of insights of its own and not just worn out jokes. Maybe it goes a bit too far of Sunstar in relation to where the first issue had him going around, but it lets the actually interesting idea of the series, having Jesus Christ interact with this kind of character, blossom forth. I was really surprised and I'm glad that Russell hasn't dropped the ball entirely yet, although I am still on the fence about whether or not he will. In any case, it was an emotionally engaging read. It was possibly one of the best things I've seen from Russell in a long time and overall I think that this is the series I wanted to have I wanted to read when it was first announced and I was really hoping and pushing for getting picked up again once DC canceled it so I'm glad that it's finally finding some footing and that the rest of the series well follow suit and actually develops and builds upon these ideas and these emotional gambits it's making so two thumbs up Next up, we have Hawkman number 15, which was a completely entertaining issue. This is probably one of the better, more optimistic issues in, in terms of seeing the series transition from what was a pretty concise and solitary, but very definitive looking 12 issue first season into something that might work on an issue to issue, more universe focused basis. And I'm all for it. The way that Venditti picks up and develops what seemed like a pretty shoved in and shallow tie in to the Year of the Villains event actually goes into some wildly amusing directions. We get reintroduced 
introduced to the Shade and when he and Carter had one of the best back and forths in this series so far. Their chemistry is actually and honestly off the charts and seeing the Shade and the way he's used and the impact he has in this issue was a total delight, giving more context and weight to the roughshod way the Shadow Thief has completely murked Carter in. It amps up the stakes, it gives him a lot more threatening presence and it does make everything feel a bit more intimidating but also more exciting and more adventurous because of it. The Shade has so many great lines and it does feel a lot more in keeping and in tone while also playing to Carter's golden age and JSA focused roots which is great because I think that is a huge part of the character at least in terms of the iconicism and being able to really wrap that in in such a way by using the Shadow Thief as both one of Hawkman's iconic villains but also the compare and contrast with the Shade really does amp things up and, and it brings more of that encompassing Hawkman detail and it does it really elegantly and entertainingly and honestly just humorously it's a very humorous issue for as dark as it gets and I thought that was pretty spot on. Paddle Leaf's art is still pretty serviceable. It does still remind me of kind of a second tier JR Jr. but it gets the job across and I'm glad they're on it because at the very least this is still an intensely readable book. Overall solid issue, solid stakes, solid character work, solid plot building and I'm just really enjoying this series. I think that this is probably a good indicator of where this series can go if it has to be something that has a lot more longevity and has to play around with the DC Universe a lot more. So if that's the compromise then this does make all the best decisions and in, in where to take it so overall two thumbs up i was really impressed i was really entertained and i just love this series i love its steadiness now we can head on into what i watched this week first off we have legion season three episode eight and we have reached the end of the line of this show this series finale and what did it really end up with honestly it was a very mixed bag nothing too worrisome nothing like half bad half good but it is definitely half good half pointless and boring the main brunt is that it's split up between Legion and Professor X dealing with both past and present Shadow Kings and the Carries and Sid protecting baby David. Big guess as to which one has anything to do with anything. And it's not like it has to be that way. But plot reveals in the final act make the baby David subplot completely worthless and a huge waste of time. So what it does end up doing is that it creates a sagging effect with the actually interesting and engaging areas the story goes into. Things lose potency when you drag them out for so long. And it does end up dragging out. Thankfully it's not all lost because the Legion and Professor X side does manage to keep things afloat pretty handily. The action sequences, the visuals, and the interactions of the factions as they fight are definitely entertaining and exciting and they do have enough tension to keep the viewer at unease and at an unrest of how it will end up. How it does end up is a matter for debate. I think it's a fitting ending, but also completely unearned. The first two seasons lean very hard into how much of a monster the Shadow King actually is, even to David, but this tries to force some sort of sympathetic twin shooter dynamic, which is not backed up by anything. I do love it though, because it's such a perfect use of Professor X and completely sensible with his inclusion in the story, but it lacks real lasting impact. Ending up much like another acclaimed Legion story, David ends up erasing himself from existence, although this time with the hope that he can return anew and better than he was. Which is, well, a nice note. Incredibly uneven finale. And the best part is that I didn't even mention this huge thing that happens that honestly comes out of nowhere and impacts everything but it's so far removed from the actual story and the characters that doesn't even make sense to mention it. It's just really edging on being complete chaos. But this series was never the most even or even most balanced show. But when it hit its stride, it was unforgettable. And this episode, despite all the flaws, and there are so many flaws in this episode, does cover some strides. There's a hearty, loving moment between the carries, a real introspective moment between Sid and David's mother, and the aforementioned Professor X plot turns, which I think really do nail that character. I do wish it could have been overall better, but it stuck the landing in the places where it counted most. While I'm disappointed, I do have to say that they tried their best it was a hard show to end and well gotta take the good of the bad i'll miss this show so much i'll miss the cast i'll miss the writing i'll miss production i'll miss everything about it so i'm just glad i got a chance to end overall one thumb up one thumb down series overall 7.5 out of 10 and lastly we have krypton season 2 episode 10 which is the season finale of this season of krypton and well it was pretty much all the good and bad this season wrapped up into one tidy package it's aimless it's all set up the character drama feels cheap the action is uninteresting and it falls flat more often than not this entire season has had a problem sussing out a reason to be 
It jumps from one plot beat to the next, but never having the time to actually develop or engage with any of them. The first season handled it much better, with Brainiac as the main antagonistic force and other outrageousness like General Azad being relegated to tertiary characters, but used for impact and spectacle. Not the cleanest thing, but it got the job done. This tried to do a lot, but it either did it really poorly or did it off screen, which was lame and boring. There are still a few good moments in this episode, but it's hard to care about them because the rest of the season has done such a bad job at getting you to care. They've not been completely rolled back to the point where it just seems pointless to continue, but it does make it an uphill battle for any possible third season because this entire season was more or less a horizontal move. And despite it all, I do hope there's a third season because what this sets up, because it's only set up, is insanely interesting and entertaining sounding. I want to believe they can pull those off and actually have some payoff but this season really shook my confidence in this show. A few good scenes here and there in the finale, especially one pitch perfect one that reminds me of the show at its best, but it's not enough to feel either satisfying or impactful. Still, if they can actually utilize stuff like the rant and our war, Alana and Adam's relationship, the invasion of Earth, or even including Apocalypse, there might be something there to be salvaged. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see them come back from this. There's still some good in this. The cast is still working. It still has some grasp on how to make entertaining, engaging, and thrilling plot beats and character beats, but it just didn't have the cohesiveness that it needed. Overall, two thumbs middle. Overall, season score, 6.5 out of 10. And finally, we have one listener question. This one is from El Bueno on Twitter, and their question is, now that Rebirth is closing for real with the Doomsday Clock finale, what are your thoughts about the initiative in general? Honestly, it's a shame to see it go, because the DC Universe dominated by Scott Snyder and Bendis is just too boring and annoying to comprehend. Rebirth wasn't the best executed idea, it had a lot of fat and wasted potential, even in the first wave of books, but at least it tried. It wanted to strike a chord, it wanted to be a classical reinvigoration like some old runs would try to be back in like the 80s or back in like the early Bronze Age where things are really being revamped but in a way that did harken back to a lot of things that made these properties great. I mean you got early priest Deathstroke which was gold, you got the Dark Trinity from Outlaws which was gold and so many others had it going on too. So it's a shame that it petered out so badly and so quickly and it seems to have gone up in smoke and being brushed aside for Bennis Legion, Young Justice, Dark Metal spinoff and really awful Justice League crossovers. I mean, neither is ideal because Rebirth still had a lot of lame ducks and it felt more like a rebranding that was there simply to harken back in name to an earlier time despite some books actually being able to capitalize on that and others just using that as an excuse to do whatever the fuck they wanted and not even care about actually being quality but it's still so much better than Bendis and Snyder just complete choke holding everything into the most rote and just irritating strata possible and honestly I would take something that is misguided and very uneven over something that is truly overbearing like that so I am disappointed to see Rebirth go out like that I think it deserved better Maybe not a lot better, but it deserved a little bit more than being swept under the carpet. So thank you for that question, El Bueno. I hope my answer was satisfactory. I had so much fun answering it, honestly, despite my doom and gloom there. I just had a really great time thinking about it. And I just want to say thank you to everyone out there who has ever sent in a question, comment, or topic to the show. It means so much to me. It's awesome. And I'm so glad to be able to answer these questions to the best of my ability, at least. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. It's so great. And I'm so humbled by it. If anyone out there has their own questions, comments, or topics they want to hear discussed on the show, you can always find me on Twitter at T-H-E underscore S-N-I-C-K. I want to give a shout out to the cover artist for the show at D-O-T-E-M-C-E-E. Check them out. Give them a follow. They really deserve it. They're amazing. And anyway, that's it for this episode. It's going to be a really short one next week because there's going to be no episodes of anything left, at least for a couple of weeks until Titans shows up again. So, well, hope you have a great one and I'll see you next week.